So in Teleview, something we've spent um, quite a bit of time and continue to spend quite a bit of time on over the last year or so. Um, and this is this is a, a services capability. So it, like I said, it can coexist with PotterNet, that's fine, but it also can stand on its own. So you might get to sites where like, yeah, we really don't want this computer head end and graphics and all these things, but we would like a mobile device and be alerted when there are events in our system. And this might be a good application for IntelliView. And so I'm gonna kind of go over some of the things there. Um, I have some kind of fancy animations in here just to kind of show the point and some of the things that we can do and, and some of the things that we've recently released that are really, you know, first in the industry. So um, I want to show you some of those things. So when you think of IntelliView, again, it's, it's the cloud and it's mobile devices and it's even, you know, a computer with a browser. So it's, you don't see any PotterNet or P, well, there is a PC here, but it's using a browser. Um, and this is an app that you can get from the iOS, uh, iOS or Android, um, and then, you know, you can leverage all the different kind of mobile devices and watches and paraphernalia that you can get from these companies to uh, show these events. So essentially what it is, is <clears throat> there's a couple of different ways to get IntelliView up and running. Um, as I said before, PotterNet, it's built in. So once you made all those connections that I showed, um, once you connected to those panels, IntelliView is built in. So right away, PotterNet is not only doing what I showed you, it's also sending data to the cloud if you enable it. Um, and you're going to get all of these features, right? You're going to start getting events on phones and on tablets and all, all those things. Um, so PotterNet's nice to have that. And then if you didn't want PotterNet, you said, well, we just want the IntelliView capabilities. We will sell you just the IntelliView Link software. And again, it needs to run on a Windows 10 or 11 platform. And again, it could be its own PC. Uh, it could be a small Nook computer. It could be a virtual machine on a server. It doesn't matter um, as long as you can make connectivity to the panels. And again, just like PotterNet, just like BackNet, just like Modbus, the, what you need to provide, the user interface is going to say, all right, what panels do you want to connect to? What is the IP address? What is the user code? That's really all you need to do. You need to give it, and then it'll make those connections to the panels, and then it will make uh, the connection to IntelliView. Um, you do need to get yourself an IntelliView account. <laughs> Literally takes minutes, and anybody can do it. You go to, a, I think it's potterintelliview.com, um, basically create a username and password, a few other things and you have an account and you use that username and password when you set up your IntelliView link and then it knows who you are and it'll start sending events into your IntelliView account. Um, the other neat thing about IntelliView is that not only can you use it as a, as the dealer, but then you can also create sub accounts, right? So that you can give, um, You'll, you, you might have hundreds of panels in there and some belong, um, you know, to the Ohio State University. Um, the others belong to uh, University of Michigan, right? So you can give your users um, the rights to monitor their system uh, through, through our interface. So um, it's not only a great product for you, maybe from a service or commissioning standpoint, it's also nice for the end user so that they can monitor and control their own system. Um, so this is kind of the idea here. There's a number of things you can do with IntelliView. Well, one is just see what's going on, and it'll if you have a mobile device, it'll send push notifications, which is what you see in the upper left-hand corner here. Um, you know, if it's the phone's in your pocket and something happens, an alarm, it'll send a push notification, which you could just click on, and it'll show you. You could click on it, and you can get detail about what's going on. Um, you can do remote programming with this as something very new for us, so we'll be showing you that. Um, but a number of things. You can even control the panel. We have a new test and inspection piece of software um, or capabilities within this, so I'll be showing you some of those things. We do have a free as well as a premium license. So if you wanted to use our free version, um, it's just that. It's free. You. Yeah, we well, you still need a license from us, so you do need to tell us you want to use it, and we'll give you a free license. And basically, what that does is 
It doesn't give you all the things I'm going to be talking about today, but it does give you basically event counters. So you would see all of the panels that you've installed and it would show you basically an event counter. So it would say, you know, on that panel, there's 10 fire alarms and four troubles. You can't dig in any deeper than that to see exactly what they are. It just gives you the counters. Um, but then if you buy our premium version, that's when we give you more and more features. So at least it's a way to start um, you, with our system, but, um, and it's a, you know, a way to get your customer comfortable with having you know, a mobile device. And so let me go through here. So one of the things that we do now is, it, and this is very new, if you have IntelliView running, we will continually back up your fire panels. So what's going on there is that at, if anybody makes any changes to the fire panels, we will back up that database. And the nice thing about that is now you're not running around looking for somebody's laptop who last programmed it or have to go to the site to download the program off the panel. All those are valid ways of doing things. But now you can at any time just go to your through and I'll show you through our Potter programming tool. You can access any one of those pot, those panel databases and know what how exactly that panel is programmed. And particularly if a panel goes down and you can't find the backup uh, file that you saved. And of course, the panel's down, so you can't get it from the panel. We have it stored in the cloud uh, under your account and you can access it get a new panel in there and reprogram. So that's kind of what's being shown here is all these are being backed up to the cloud continuously. Any changes, there's nothing you need to do. Any changes, they go to the cloud. Um, and then you always have access to the latest database. And then once it's backed up, and I'll show you this interface, you can use our Potter programming tool and grab those files from the cloud. And then not only that, once you make changes, you can send those programs back to the panel no matter where you're located. So you might be in your office and you made a change in the program and you want to send it back to that panel that's remotely located. You can do that through the Potter programming tool and in Teleview. Um, the only thing I'll tell you on that is we still have kept in place the, the requirement that somebody go to the panel and enable it for downloads. And, and a lot of that is based on UL restrictions about programming panels and the panels having to be tested after they're programmed. Um, it's not a technical issue, it's more of a standards issue. But all that being said, you don't have to have your programmer at the site, you could have somebody else at the site enable the panel for downloads, someone can then program it remotely. So a really nice feature, um, I think, one of the first or the first in the industry to be able to do some of these things. Um, and it's a really nice capability, particularly the backing up of the panels. So I think that's great. And then, and then this remote programming, you still can do things the old way. Like, and I think I would slide that. Yeah. So we still handle things the old way where you have all your files located on your hard disk and you connect to the panel and you program them. All that is still valid um, and still supported. Um, and you can just locally program your panel just the way you do today. I think that's all this slide shows. All right, so then there's a new test and inspect feature. Uh, and in this test and inspect feature, you could be going around with your mobile device. You could be smoking heads, um, getting fire alarms to come in from those panels. And as you're holding that mobile device, we're bringing events into the mobile device. So you're seeing those events as they're happening. You don't need someone standing at the front panel on a, on a microphone telling you, yeah, yeah, that we got that event and all those things. You don't need to do that. If they're all coming in and in this interface, it's a little different than just reporting. What we do in this interface is we latch every event, right? So even trouble. So even if you, like we just got that fire alarm and let's just say another trouble came in, it would go beneath that. Um, you would get all of those events. And then even if someone reset the panel, those events would be latched in at a part of your test. So they stay there. If you need to get rid of them, if you say, well, I don't really want that in the report, you get the little garbage can and get rid of it. But it's all up to you uh, how you handle this interface. And um, you, you get to control this. And now the nice thing about this, this test can stay active. Uh, you'll see that little button there. That test can stay active uh, forever. 
um, and you can keep testing the system or, or you could be testing and turn off the test because you're going to go home for the night and turn it back on in the morning and start testing again. Um, you have total control. Also, that visual, functional, and results um, green LEDs you see there, you can press those. If you say, hey, it, I did get the event, so that's good. But the visual, you know, someone painted it. I can click on that, and it would turn red and just fail it. And what really all this is doing, we're not creating uh, NFPA 72 reports or anything like that. We're just giving you a record of everything that was done on that panel. And so this becomes a, a significant part of your overall report um, for your for the test and inspection that you're doing. And so you'll see the download CSV file. You hit that button, download CSV, and what it'll do is basically download a CSV file. And if you're on a mobile device, it'll ask you where you want to send it to. So you can email it off or text it to somebody, what have you. Um, but essentially what you see that's kind of overlaid on my slide, it'll create this CSV file that you bring into um, Excel and it has all the information for that point. So, you know, it tells you the panel, the SLC, um, you know, all of your labels and addressing. And then really over to the right is more of the detail of, all right, they, that, that signal it was in the conference room. It was a fire alarm that came in um, and it passed uh, all the visual, functional and overall. And here's the date and time. Um, I don't think... Yeah, I didn't fail any of them. If you had hit any of these and said fail, uh, one of these would say fail. So it might say failed visual. Um, and then you use this information the way you see fit into your overall report. Um, so that's the, the new test function that was added. Um, and every all everything I'm showing is all part of this IntelliView app. There, you don't buy separate things. The only choice you have is using our free version or our premium version. Um, so this is obviously the premium version that has all of these capabilities. And then the, the more basic things were really the alerts, which was really the first thing we did when we came out with IntelliView. So, you know, if there is actually a fire alarm, um, all of those things are again sent to the IntelliView cloud and then you get the push notification that goes to your phone. Uh, so you know that's going, or your mobile device. And so you see what's going on and you can you can click on that and then dig in so that you see specifically what's going on. So that's, you know, the fire alarm in the conference room. And now you got, you know, detailed information about the event. And so that's really the, you know, where IntelliView started was really just event reporting uh, in mobile devices. And, and everything that I'm showing you also can be done in a browser also. So um, most people use the mobile device and the app, but you can have it you can actually just have a browser up and running and all these events are coming in. So to some extent, you could use IntelliView, uh, I'll say as like kind of a, a poor man's um, potternet, uh, meaning that it is showing events coming in. There's no graphics in there, what have you, but you are getting all of the events and you are seeing uh, what's going on in your system. Um, and probably more similar maybe to even if you're familiar with FMT, m you know, more on that level, but no graphics. Um, um, there is really no control uh, in IntelliView. The only time that you can control a panel in IntelliView is if you do put the panel into a walk test mode. Um, and you don't have to put a panel in walk test mode to use our test feature, but you do need to put a panel in walk test mode if you want to do any control of the panel. And again, all of these things are based on um, our UL restrictions, but as we see it and UL sees it, if you put the panel in a walk test mode, you're more in some level of a commissioning or maintenance mode and not a monitoring mode. So we do let you control the panel uh, and there's so, some options for that. Um, without getting too detailed on this, we do have a yearly subscription for the premium. As I mentioned, the free subscription uh, for the standard feature. So something you could just play with. Um, unlimited number of users. So we, the way the way we charge for this is by the number of panels that you're connected to, not by the number of users that you have. So if you have, you know, two panels, there's a price for that. And, but you could have a hundred users. It doesn't matter um, as long as you, you know, have the licenses for the two panels. The number of users you have is completely up to you. Um, so this goes into some of the detail of the ordering, but I don't want to dive too deep into that today. Um, but there, it just kind of shows you how you order the product.